Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about Steam, and not just Steam as in the digital game distribution platform, but what Steam is trying to become with Steam OS, Steam Machines, the new Steam controller, and even the Vive VR headset. Now in order to break into the console market these days, you have to be a massive company with tons of cash to throw around. Valve has grown into that company and they can now afford to try and come out with their own console, but they're taking a way different approach. In fact, I don't even really like calling it a console. It is kind of sort of a console, but it's also a bit of a hybrid platform. And before we actually get into the basics of what the Steam Machine actually is, let's talk about some of the problems that you face in the current console slash PC gaming world. And the fact that I think there are some pretty significant problems that hopefully this system will have a solution to. The first problem is the one that's been around since there's ever been two different console platforms on the market. And that is, I can't play with my friends because because they have a different console than I do. I bought the Xbox, they have a PlayStation 4 or a Wii, etc. Then of course there's the dilemma of, I really like playing first person shooters, so I bought an Xbox to play Call of Duty, but I also really like playing Mario games. Now I also have to buy a Wii. The hardware in the Xbox is perfectly capable of running the graphics for a Mario game, but because it exists on Nintendo's proprietary system, there's no way you can play it unless you buy their hardware also. And then of course there's the next generation dilemma. Nowadays consoles seem to last quite a while, but every now and then you come out with a new version of that console. They're often not backwards compatible, although the new Xbox One is trying to work that feature in, but uh, it means buying a whole new set of games, buying a whole new set of hardware, um, and oftentimes having sort of disparity between you and your friends that you might have used to play with because you've got the new gen, they haven't upgraded yet, and there's this sort of weird transitional phase that has to exist within the console market. Not to mention, if you want to play any of your old favorite games, you got to leave that older console still sitting there and plugged in just in case because oftentimes they don't get a reboot on the new platform or you don't want to buy a reboot anyway. Then of course there's crazy exclusive content for one platform. Now Call of Duty is coming out early on the PlayStation where it always used to be an Xbox game. People are getting pissed off. There's divergence, disparity between the two markets now. Things that gamers as a whole I'm sure really wish they didn't have to deal with. I think most people just wish games would all come out at the same time on all platforms. Then of course there's the developer conundrum. There's a lot of gamers in the world but if you want your game to be played by all of them you got to come out on all these different platforms. That means you're going to increase your production time, you're going to increase your expenses, you're going to have some platforms that lag behind other platforms. A great example is how the Call of Duty franchise just doesn't work as well on PC anymore. It's kind of fallen behind in terms of the attention it gets. And then you run into issues of divided player base where the Call of Duty market on PC is so small right now that it can be hard to find servers where if you play on a different platform the servers are populated and easy to find. You can see the same thing with Battlefield Hardline, popular on consoles but pretty much dead on PC. And at the end of the day the fan base always seems to sort of choose a platform that every game was meant to be played on. Counter-Strike did make a pretty big push towards the console market but it's always had such a strong PC player base that it's really just kind of clung to that PC crowd. And then of course we have the controller variability from Wii to Xbox to PlayStation and then to keyboard and mouse on PC and even joysticks. There's a lot of different peripherals, a lot of different controls, uh, different ways to control the same game on different platforms. So you run into all these different types of skills that you have to develop as a gamer that don't necessarily translate between the different platforms and can prevent a good player on say console from transitioning to PC and vice versa. So I think I've painted a pretty clear picture of a lot of the problems, dilemmas that the console PC gaming world faces. Not to say that the gaming world is suffering uh, extensively. There's just a lot of problems and it could be a lot better. And of course the question everybody's asking is the Steam Box the solution to all of these problems? Is it going to take away my need to decide between different types of hardware or choose which platform, which means I have to choose different friend groups that I'm going to play with? Now, of course, I don't have the answer for you in this video, but I think we can all take a pretty well-educated guess. And I think the most important thing to understand, first of all, is what really is a Steam machine? What is Steam OS? 
Put simply, a Steam machine is just a PC running Steam OS. So instead of booting up Windows or Mac OS or your version of Linux, this is Steam OS, which is actually running on Valve's own version of Linux that they've designed around running video games. And unlike Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, anybody can build a Steam OS. I could load it on the computer that I'm running right now. I could build my own custom Steam machine from the ground up, or I could order one from a company that's already pre-built for me. And if you even go on Steam store right now, you can find some Steam machines that are selling for like $499, kind of in the console range. And you can even order more expensive ones that are running better hardware that'll allow you to play some of the more demanding games. And of course, the beauty with this is that Valve doesn't have to develop their own console system. They can let other people build their consoles. They can let other companies compete with each other to make the best Steam box. And it means that there's gonna be no next generation console stepping stone for Steam OS. People will just upgrade their hardware as they see fit or buy a new Steam machine when their current one is getting a little bit older and outdated. There won't be any sort of massive divergence, which means you'll still be able to install and play all of your old games from now till supposedly Supposedly the end of time. And then of course there's plans to support Hulu, Netflix, Spotify, all the media streaming services on this box so it can kind of transition to your now home entertainment system much like all of the modern day consoles currently do. So you should just be able to have one Steam box in the center of your living room and that'll take care of all your gaming and entertainment needs. And to help better sell the console, Valve has developed their own Steam controller, which I have to say actually looks really badass. It looks like it's supposed to be the stepping stone between traditional dual analog stick controller and a mouse and keyboard. It's got these dual touch pads, which are supposed to give you incredible sensitivity and accuracy. So uh, a PC gamer should be able to transition to this controller relatively easily, and so should a console player. It's a pretty ingenious design if you ask me. And in addition to that, Valve is taking all the games you already own on Steam and just transferring it to Steam OS. Steam OS is essentially plugging into your same Steam account if you already have one on PC. So if you bought games on Steam, you should be able to play them on Steam OS with the big caveat right now, which is that only about a third of the games on Steam actually run on Steam OS because the games have to be re-encoded to work on Linux. But even so, that means that Steam machines will still have more games available to them than pretty much any competing console out there. Not to mention they have an interesting uh, streaming ability where you can stream your PC games onto Steam OS and basically just play them as long as you have a PC running in your house somewhere. It's on the same network as your Steam machine. You can just stream it across machines. And I've actually tested this out already by accident where I booted up my laptop, opened up Steam, and it just allowed me to stream some of my games that were installed on my main PC and it worked really well, surprisingly well. And for users like myself that already have pretty high-end PCs and we're not necessarily looking to invest in a lot of other hardware, there's something that Valve is coming out with called the Steam Link, which is 50 bucks. Uh, you can pre-order it on Steam right now. And that'll basically just allow you to stream your games to any sort of monitor in the house. So you can just plug it into your TV, uh, turn on the Steam Link, and then you can just stream all your Steam games from your awesome PC, wherever it might be, uh, in the household to your TV. So if there's some racing games or whatever that you want to play on your TV, you should be able to do that pretty cheaply with the Steam Link. And unlike current gen consoles, there's going to be no subscription fee to use the Steam OS service to go online and play with friends, which is really cool because I always found it stupid that consoles made you pay an additional subscription fee just to play online with your friends. I mean, you're already paying for internet. Why should you have to pay more to go online with your internet? Never made sense to me, but uh, this is something that SteamOS, again, has over the current gen consoles. Uh, then again, current gen consoles could always get rid of their subscription fees to try and remain competitive. So with Steam having 65 million current users, having a platform that's never going to require you to get the next version and throw away your old games, uh, supporting all different kinds of input devices, and not separating you from your friends list or anything like that, it seems like it's got a really good thing going for it to be a massive, massive competitor. That's not to say, though, that there aren't some things that could hold this back. One of those is the idea of playing all your PC titles with a controller. Sounds really cool, sounds awesome to be able to transition from my PC to the living room, pick up a controller and play all my games there, but if keyboard and mouse are more precise ways of controlling my character and being competitive, 
seems like that's going to be something that I might not necessarily want to do. I might be at a huge disadvantage playing against somebody who's using a keyboard and mouse. They may even have to start listing off what kind of control system is preferable for each game so that somebody using a Steam machine doesn't buy Counter-Strike thinking that they're going to be competitive against keyboard and mouse users. They're probably just going to get frustrated and regret that purchase in the long run. Then again, you can still plug in a keyboard and mouse to your Steam machine and just play with the same controllers that other people are using. But uh, again, this adds a bit of complexity to the platform, and that's something that I think you want to avoid in the long run is overcomplicating your control schemes, your controller options, making sure that people aren't at a huge disadvantage. And this certainly wouldn't keep a platform from succeeding, but it's going to have some growing pains in the start. With people probably being a little bit lost as to what direction they should go and what controllers they should be using. And then of course there's the Vive, Valve's new partnership with HTC to bring VR to the PC and SteamOS gaming crowd. This is going to be something that's exclusive to PC and SteamOS and I assume they're going to have some pretty cool titles to ship with this when it first comes out. That's the other thing that pretty much every other console platform has had when they launch is exclusive titles. And I hate to say it because I like to get away from exclusivity but in order to really launch the Steam OS, they're going to have to have some cool titles come out with it. And according to people who have tested out the Vive, there's been a bit of an Aperture Labs virtual reality demo. So who knows, maybe we'll be getting some Portal, maybe some Half-Life 3 to help try and boost the adoption of it. Now for a while I kept going back and forth as to whether or not SteamOS was a good idea or whether or not it was going to succeed and I kind of had an epiphany recently and that was that even if you are a diehard PC gamer, you've got an awesome PC and you would never in your life think about installing SteamOS on your PC, it doesn't really matter and I fall into that category. I don't really have a reason to install SteamOS because I've got Steam on my computer, I can play all the Steam games just fine. I'm getting the Steam controller, that's going to plug into my computer and play Steam games. I'm also going to get the Vive when that comes out and I can plug that in and play all Steam games, but I'm also going to be able to play against anybody running on a Steam console. So it's effectively strengthening the player base. And likewise, if you're like afraid of adopting a Steam machine or a Steam console because you're like, well, who else is going to be playing on it? You're essentially just jumping into the entire PC crowd of gamers. You are going to buy this machine. You're not going to need to deal with all the PC overhead or the PC customization and all that junk. You can just plug in a controller and play with a player base that is already well defined and well populated in any of your favorite video games. It's effectively making the jump to PC gaming much simpler or in that nature kind of redefining what PC gaming is or can become. So even if somebody who's probably not going to adopt SteamOS, at least not at the moment, it's still something that that I'm very excited about because it means expanding my player base and also potentially trying to merge the PC and console market into one giant platform. Now, obviously that comes with sort of the scare of having one company controlling everything in sort of a monopoly format, but that's something that we can worry about if that time ever comes. The idea though is that if something works well on SteamOS or on PC, it could become much more important to build games that function way better on PC rather than than just doing crappy console ports. So one way or another, I'm excited for SteamOS and I really want to see the Steam box succeed. I want to see a whole new generation of people adopting this style of gaming. And uh, I'm looking forward to the release of the Steam controller and the Vive headset later this year. And I think that's really going to sort of launch the console. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see some big titles uh, announced along with the adoption of these new controllers and headsets just to try and push SteamOS a bit more, kind of get it out the door. Because there hasn't really been like an official release of it per se, even though you can build the Steam machine as of today. Let me know in the comments if the Steam machine is something that you're considering considering building or if you already have one or what you think about the future of PC console gaming. Should we unify the market or should we continue to have tons of different platforms competing with each other? As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.